Well, back in Tel Aviv, to talk about what's happened today is Zalman Shaval, the twice-serving former ambassador to the United States and now a confidant to Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, Zalman Shaval, how critical a moment is this for Israel, do you think? Well, it's obviously a critical moment. Uh, soldiers are being killed, soldiers fall. Uh, we don't see an end yet because we see the Hamas going on, breaking every, every ceasefire, continuing shooting missiles and uh, grenades at Israel, at civilian places. And we would like, of course, uh, the Hamas, perhaps with the support of others, to understand that in order to save their own situation, not just politically, but their civilian population, they have to stop the shooting, they have to stop the, the, the fighting, and then we will, some way or another, perhaps direct or indirectly, begin to talk about the future. OK, but Secretary of State John Kerry said today that it would be a tragedy if the capture of Hadar Goldin led to more suffering, more loss of life. But that's already happening, isn't it? 50 Palestinians dead just today. Look, um, we really, I mean, my heart hurts when I see what's happening amongst the civilian population in Gaza. But, you know, I'm sure that when the RAF pilots bombed uh, Hamburg and Dresden and killed many civilians, they weren't happy about that. And we aren't happy about that. But there's a terrorist regime there, just like in Iraq and Syria today, who don't even really care about the, the lot of their own people. And they go on and go on. By the way, this didn't start 23 days ago. It started in 2012 or even before. This okay. whole war really okay. broke out because on an unending basis they shot at us. OK, but the ceasefire, there was never really any intention to abide by that, was there? Well, I can't speak for Hamas. Israel certainly had an intention to abide by that. It did. And then the... Hamas kidnapped, abducted an Israeli soldier, and there were even during those moments, the first moments of the ceasefire, about 10 or 11, uh, not missiles, but grenade bombs, mortar bombs being shot at Israeli civilian but, places. But and of course, the then we had to respond, and that's how it's going okay. on for the last 20 years. Okay, but 20 under the days. terms of the ceasefire, Israel was allowed to continue the tunneling, tunneling operations and the dismantling of the tunneling operations. I think the Egyptians have made a very, very good uh, proposal, which Israel has accepted. First of all, both sides should stop the firing, but completely stop, not the way the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Hamas has misused the ceasefire in the past humanitarian ceasefire, where there was nothing humanitarian uh, about this from their side. Stop shooting, stop killing and then talk. That's the way to go about it. Do you accept that Israel underestimated the extent of the Hamas tunnels? It was a failure of military intelligence. Well, that is something which will have to be looked at. You know, what uh, ISIS is doing in Iraq and Syria, people didn't expect that either. Maybe we didn't have a complete picture. Maybe we did. I don't know. I'm not a military strategist or an armchair general, but these things will be looked at. Uh, you handed over more than 1,000 Palestinian prisoners to get Gilad Shalit back. Do you think there will be some kind of similar deal? Is that what's ahead now? My feeling, if I can, uh, you know, seriously gauge the feeling amongst Israelis, I mean, regular Israelis, including the parents of this abducted soldier, the answer is probably no. I don't think we want to repeat that uh, the same situation as before, because look what happened. It happened that Hamas didn't stop firing, and the whole thing there was another another act and another act, and this is unending. We don't really want to cease fire. We want to have an end to this to this whole situation. Okay. We want to live in peace with our neighbors. Zalman Shaval, thank you very much for joining us. Well, shortly before we came on air, I spoke to the Palestinian activist and legislator Hanan Ashwari from the West Bank. I asked her whether the abduction of an Israeli soldier has now changed the course of the war. 
Well, the uh, one party that uh, announced the abduction of the uh, officer is Israel. We still haven't had a single uh, resistance group claiming responsibility, so we don't know. But certainly what changed the equation was, as far as we're concerned, was the Israeli operation early on this morning and a, a massive, massive airstrike on Rafah, on different residential areas, killing instantly over 70 people, now over 108 people. And, and this uh, air bombardment and by sea and, and shelling by land and so on has led to another humanitarian disaster and another massacre. We are committed to a ceasefire. Our delegation is ready. We, have, we tried to send it to Cairo this morning, and the Israelis aren't showing up. So our delegation will be going to Cairo tomorrow. Well, Israel blames Hamas for breaking the ceasefire. But uh, as you say, Hamas hasn't formally claimed responsibility for the kidnapping of the soldier. But if, if they were to, would it be a coup for Hamas or a miscalculation, as some have said? No, if, if uh, Hamas or any of the militant groups, we don't know, because Hamas normally announces, its military wing, uh, Qassam, uh, announces clearly when they uh, capture uh, an Israeli soldier. And to Palestinians, this is perfectly legitimate, because this is an invading army, and an invading army on your own land, and an army that's been not just besieging you or putting you under occupation, but shelling and bombing and destroying uh, life as we know it in, in uh, Gaza is a legitimate target. So capturing a soldier would be seen as a coup for anybody who does it, whether it's the Hamas military wing or any other military wing. But as I said so far, nobody has claimed responsibility, which is rather strange for us. I just put to you what um, the peace activist Gershon Baskin has tweeted. He obviously helped negotiate the release of Gilad Shalit. And he said that the capture of Hadar Goldin has just signed the death sentence of many Hamas leaders. There will not be another Shalit deal, he said. I don't know. I, Gershon Baskin plays, you know, several games. I really don't uh, uh, take him as a source of, of uh, analysis or assessment. He may say whatever he thinks, but I think that uh, basically the capture of any soldier will be seen by the Palestinians as a legitimate uh, step because the soldiers are an invading army on your own land. They are not only an occupation army and the besieging army, but they are busy bombing, shelling, killing, destroying, and, and wreaking havoc and, and carnage on your own territory. OK, but the capture of this soldier thwarts any possibility of dialogue, so there's going to be even more deaths of Palestinians, as there has been today. Yeah, but that's the thing. I mean, Israel doesn't need an excuse to kill Palestinians. It's been killing them daily since the occupation began. We've had uh, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians killed. The thing is, just because the world became desensitized and inured to the death of Palestinians doesn't mean that they're not horrific and that they haven't been happening every day. And as usual, whenever Palestinians are killed, they are blamed. Why did you do this? You, you bring upon yourself your own death. This is not true. Israel has, does not have the license to keep killing Palestinians, and it doesn't have the right to spin it as though it's the Palestinians who are responsible for their own death. Hanan Ashrawi, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you.